the shoe fits by Gary Soto illustrated by Terry Widener Rico had three brothers and one sister and when you counted his parents and uncle Celso who lived with them his home was as crowded as a bus he didn't really mind a noisy house what Rico minded most were his hand-me-down clothes. His oldest brother, Hector, passed his shirts and pants to Manuel, who passed them to Carlos, who passed them to Rico. Rico passed them into the garbage can. Mom, I need some new clothes, Rico cried one day when he put on a jacket that Carlos had outgrown. Two buttons were missing and the fabric was faded. Mijo, new clothes cost money, his mother said. When Rico started to pout, Uncle Celso brought out his old wallet and handed Rico a $5 bill. Let me help you, Uncle said. Rico refused the money. He didn't want to tell his uncle that new clothes cost more than that. But for Rico's ninth birthday, his mom bought him a pair of brand new shoes. They were called loafers. They were the fanciest shoes Rico had ever owned. They didn't even have laces to drag in the dirt. Put a penny in them, Rico's sister Teresa said. That's the style. But instead of worthless pennies, Rico pushed in nickels. There, he said. He slipped into his new shoes and clicked his heels together. That day, Rico marched down the street, grinning proudly at his shoes. He liked how the nickels glinted in the sunlight. At the corner playground, some kids were throwing water balloons at each other. Rico wanted to join them, but was afraid he might ruin his shoes. Suddenly, Angel sneaked up from behind and yelled, Hey, how come you got nickels in your shoes? You ain't rich. It's the style, Rico answered. There ain't no style like that, Angel growled. Nobody wears those kind of stupid shoes. Then Angel demanded the nickels from Rico's shoes. No, Angel, Rico begged. I don't want to mess up my new loafers. It was hard to put the nickels in. Forget your loafers. Angel snapped, and he ripped the nickels from the slots. Rico went home and threw his shoes into the closet. But at the end of the summer, he changed his mind. He had received an invitation to a birthday party. It was from Christy Hernandez. No girl had ever invited him to a birthday party before. On the day of the party, Rico brushed his teeth extra hard and combed his hair four different ways. He settled on slicking his hair back. He felt suave. Next, he put on his newest looking hand-me-downs and finally got his fancy loafers from the closet. Come on, he grunted, trying to cram his feet into the shoes. When he stood up, he knew the shoes were too tight pain stabbed the top of his feet as he took a step. He took off the torture shoes and stretched them, yanking on the leather. He put on his thinnest socks, even though they had holes in the heels. Rico left the house walking stiffly. After three painful blocks, he wished he were crawling instead of walking. But lucky for him, he discovered that his feet didn't hurt so much if he walked backwards. He walked like that all the way to the party. Nice shoes, Christy said, greeting him at the door. Thanks, said Rico, trying to smile. He didn't want to tell her that they were killing his feet. He was sure that he had blood blisters and one of his little toes had fallen off. But if you don't mind, I'm going to take them off. Why? Christy asked. Rico's mind whirled for an answer. He clicked his fingers and said, to play soccer. When he scored two goals, his feet felt better. 
Over dinner that night, Rico told his family that Christy's party was great. Everyone was there. Jose Luis, Julie, Debbie, Joey, Carolina, Lupe, Rachel, Sophia, Martin, Jamie, Lily, Maya, and Maya's little sister, I forgot her name, plus some little cousins of Christie's who were still in their diapers. Iole, that's a lot of kids to feed, Uncle Celso remarked. Yeah, but a party's more fun with lots of kids, Rico said. Next year, Rico, we can have a party for you like that, his uncle said. And you know why? Rico shook his head. Because I have a new job as a waiter, Uncle announced. I'll make a lot of money. Mucho dinero. After dinner, Uncle Celso began to gather the dirty plates from the table. Rico's father protested. Leave them for the kids. No, hombre. I have to practice being a waiter, Uncle said. I'll help with the dishes, said Rico. He liked to be with Uncle and listen to his stories about Mexico. Rico rolled up the sleeves of his sweatshirt. As the two worked side by side, Rico noticed that he was slightly taller than Uncle. He noticed that Uncle's pants were too loose for him and that his shirt had flecks of paint on it. He looked at Uncle's shoes. The next morning, Rico brought his loafers to the couch where Uncle slept. Kiss the stove? Uncle asked, opening one eye. What's this? A present for you. Kind of used, but try them on. Uncle set up and took the shoes. These are the most beautiful shoes I've ever had, he said. He patted Rico's cheek. You don't mind if they're hand-me-downs? Rico asked. Hand-me-downs nothing, Uncle said. These are brand new. I can go to work in style. He tapped on the sole and then put them on. He squinted an eye at his nephew. Are you sure you want to give them to me? Yeah, I'm sure, Rico said. To tell you the truth, Uncle, I like them but they hurt my feet. I grew a little. Uncle reached for his front pocket. These coins are older than I am, Uncle said. He held up two centavos, brown as his own skin, and smiled. They're kind of like hand-me-downs, too. When Rico took the old Mexican coins, he knew what to do with them fit them into the slots of his new loafers, if he ever got any. Next time around, he would wear them no matter what people like Angel said. The end. To find If the Shoe Fits and other books by Gary Soto, visit your local library.